the colon. Primarily, the colon is used to call attention to the words that follow it. Moreover, it has some conventional uses. Rule 1. Use a colon after an independent clause to call attention to a list and a positive or a quotation. A list. Example. Michael Buckoff's daily exercise regimen consists of the following. Running 8 to 10 miles in the morning, stretching for about 15 minutes at noon, and running 4 to 6 miles in the afternoon. Notice these colon right here and by putting it here it draws attention to the three items that follow it the 8 to 10 miles of stretching and running 4 to 6 miles and a positive Harry Henderson has two loves in his life his wife and his dog so the colon is used after life to call attention to the two positives which come after it a quotation Nancy told a friend last week about her recently being hired at Walmart. I just got hired at Walmart and will start working there in two weeks. So notice the colon directly after Walmart. Now, it's also possible many times when you introduce direct quotes that you use a comma, but the difference is if the idea, this idea here, if the group of words which precede the quote, if these words can stand alone as their own complete sentence, you want to use a colon. For example, if I said, Nancy told her friend last week about her recently being hired at Walmart, that can kind of stand as its own sentence. Now, if I said, Nancy said, I'd have to put a comma there, I just got hired, because if you say Nancy said, that's not a complete idea. So the comma or the colon in terms of introducing the quote depends on whether you have a complete idea or an incomplete idea. Rule 2. Use a colon between two independent clauses if the second one summarizes or explains the first. Example, confidence is like conviction. It must be steadfast and enduring. When an independent clause follows a colon, it may begin with a capital or lowercase letter. So you can see here I have a capital, but I could have also changed that uh, to a small uh, uh, letter also. Rule 3. Use a colon after the salutation in a formal letter to indicate hours and minutes to show proportions between a title and a subtitle and between city and publisher information in bibliographic entries. Dear Sir or Madam, notice the colon here. Hours and minutes. 7.23 p.m. Notice the colon right there. To show proportions, the ratio of teachers to students was 1 to 10. Even though you see the colon here, you read this as 1 to 10. It means there's one teacher for every 10 students. That's what that means if you see that. You have titles and subtitles. So capital punishment in the United States why it is not a deterrent, so you have the colon here. Now, when you see this, it means this is the main idea, or the main title, is the first part. And what comes after the colon here, why it is not a deterrent, is what's called the subtitle, or kind of the support idea. Now, when you're doing work cited sections with formal papers and such, you'll put a... Um, semicolon between the city and the publisher information. For example, you have Miami, you have the colon there, then you have McGraw-Hill 2010. Rule 4. Avoid common misuses of the colon. Between a verb and its object or complement, for example, some of my favorite hobbies are 
running, internet surfing, and playing with my Todd was. So a lot of uh, writers, they'll do this. They'll put the colon there, but that's not a good idea because you have running, internet surfing, and playing with Todd, where all of these things are complements of the verb are, and you do not want to separate them. Okay, be careful. Do not put a colon between a preposition and its object. This is another common error in writing. Example, her secrets to succeeding as a student consist of effectively managing time, always attending class, and meeting with professors during their scheduled office hours. In this case, you definitely do not want to put a comma here. You'll see it in writing, but it's not correct. So that would not be correct. So we remove that. Let's do the next one. After such as, including or for example, so if you had a problem with prepositions and objects, you'll probably have a problem in this area too. Let's take a look at the example. Last week, Alex made three decisions, including purchasing a new car, choosing a university, and getting a new cell phone. So some people will put one here. And that's not correct. So you definitely do not want to do that either. Marshmallows stuffed in his mouth so far. Marshmallows. Wow. That's incredible, Bill. That's gross. We're done. <laughs> All right. Let's 